Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. Amen. Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, please make an examination of conscience. And now, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. And the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ. Only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, creator of all, you ordered the earth to bring forth life and crowned its goodness by creating the human family. As we celebrate the solemnity of the Holy Family, Teach us to sanctify the sanctity of human love. Show us the value of family life and help us to live in peace with all people. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
a reading from the book of Sarek. For the Lord honored the father above the children, and he confirmed the right of the mother over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins, and whoever glorifies his mother is like one who lays up treasure. Whoever honors his father will be gladdened by his own children, and when he prays, he will be heard. Whoever glorifies the Father will have long life, and whoever obeys the Lord will refresh his mother. O son, help your father in his old age, and do not grieve him as long as he lives. Even if he is lacking in understanding, show forbearance. In all your strength, do not despise him, for kindness to a father will not be forgotten, and against your sins it will be credited to you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the Lord's house all the days of my life. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him, Wives, be subjected to your husbands as fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Truly with you, God is hidden, the God of Israel, the Savior. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Now when the Magi had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, 
and remain there till I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt have I called you, my son. But when Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that our curious reigned over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the dis district of Galilee. And he went and dwelt in a city called Nazareth that was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This text is taken from the first letter of St. Peter the Apostle, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my brothers and sisters, the family of God. Today, our church celebrates the solemnity of the Holy Family. It is a time where we hold in honor and respect the Nazarene family of God, a simple carpenter, Joseph his wife, Mary, and their son, Jesus, from the lineage of David. The roots of the Solemnity of the Holy Family can go back all the way to 1893, and it is celebrated not only in the Catholic tradition, but also among many Anglican and mainstream Protestant churches we find that the definition of a family 
is a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. A family is also defined as the descendants of one's ancestors. But the solemnity of the Holy Family goes beyond recalling that special family from Nazareth. I believe that today we celebrate the solemnity of the Holy Family as individual families and as a parish, a family of faith. What constitutes a Holy Family? I believe that it is a family where hope, faith, and love becomes the standards of our devotion to God, our Heavenly Father. For it is only in having God, our Heavenly Father, as the head of our households that truly makes a family holy. I chose my scripture passage for, to, for today from the first letter of Peter. In these two passages, it is declared that first, we are a chosen race. We recall the words of Jesus who spoke unto his apostles. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to bear fruit. From the very beginning of Holy Scripture, we see where God chose righteous and holy people and families and established a covenant with them. From Noah to Abraham, from Isaac to Jacob, from the house of David to the New Testament examples of Zechariah and Elizabeth, Joseph and Mary, we see that the righteous, the holy ones, have been called out by God. We are also told that we are a holy nation, and most importantly, God's chosen people. We have seen God revealing his plan to all who call upon him and all who seek him. We are told that we are a royal priesthood of believers called upon to offer our prayers and our devotions to God. It is St. Paul who tells us that we are also adopted by God and that we call upon him not as a stranger but rather as Abba or Father. The final statement in Peter's exhortation is one where once we were no people, we had no identity, who lived in darkness, but that a great light has shined upon all of us, and through this illumination we find our true identity as God's own people. One of my favorite scripture passages comes from the Old Testament book of the prophet Jeremiah, 29, 11 through 14, and it tells us the following. <coughs> Open your hearts and listen to this message. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. And if you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations. In these words, my brothers and sisters, 
We put our trust in the Word of God, that God has plans for you, for your families, and for our own parish. We need only to seek Him with our entire being, and that in seeking Him, we are told that we will find Him. My brothers and sisters, may the solemnity of the Holy Family bring to all of us today wisdom and light to our families and to our parish as we reflect upon the Word of God spoken by the prophets of old as well as spirit-led individuals such as St. Peter and St. Paul. Let the words of our reading today from St. Paul the Colossian find roots within you. Brothers and sisters, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which, indeed, you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. May we, my dear brothers and sisters, as we use the holy family of righteousness as our own standards. May we always trust in the Lord and his guidance, and may we ever be righteous before him, seeking his presence in our lives, in the lives of our family, and in the life of our beloved church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. They took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, accept this sacrifice we offer in honor of the Holy Family. Through the prayers of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and of her husband Joseph, Unite our families in peace and love. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You sent us, Jesus Christ who conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mother, and was most holy. We have come to know and love you as our perfect Father, Abba, through the revealed mystery of your incarnate Word. We praise you, Father, and through your Son, now made visible, along to be with you, our unseen God. Therefore, on this solemnity of the Holy Family, we join with our voices, with the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, along with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full Dear brothers and 
brothers and sisters, it is upon the altar that we offer sacrifice, but we also offer our prayers. And as we pray together that God would receive these gifts and bless these gifts, I ask that in your prayers today, you remember Mary Durkee, who is at Cooley Dickinson Hospital. I saw Mary this past week, and I was told today that it doesn't look good, that um, it might be a day or so before she's called unto the Lord. So let us remember her in our prayers as we pray for one another, as we pray for our sick and for our shut-ins, that God would hear our prayers as his people and bless the gifts which we offer to him. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants and handmaidens, O Lord. We pray together for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the lonely, the homeless, and for the hungry, for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad, for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you. 
blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, are servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the Magnet Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. <clears throat> to these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Grant us peace in our day, that supported by the help of your mercy, 
May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive into everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord.
may we proceed mentally, and may this temple gift become to us an everlasting healing. May your body which I have received and your blood which I have drunk cling to my innermost being and grant that no sin remain in me, in whom these holy sacraments have nourished, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, my servants whom I have chosen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us 
us pray. Loving Father, we desire to live as Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in peace and communion with you and one another. May this holy sacrament, which we have received, strengthen us to live like the Holy Family and to face the challenges of life. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lo, ho, ho, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, the one worthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy, may it be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. Became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Health is the most, most important. And we also pray for not only health for one another, but also for happiness and for prosperity in the coming year. I do bring to mind a few of the announcements. Today, following Holy Mass, there will be not only the fellowship hour, but we also will have the monthly meeting of the Ladies' Adoration of the Most Blessed Sacrament. I bring to mind that uh, today at 2 o'clock there will be a Polish Kalende um, sing-along that will be held at St. Valentine's Polish National Catholic Church in Northampton. Uh, if you have never gone, I think it is something that is well worth spending uh, moments of your time where there is a wonderful program that is put on, uh, and after that, refreshments will be served. I bring to mind tomorrow is the solemnity of the Epiphany of our Lord. Holy Mass will be celebrated at 9 o'clock with the blessing of the charcoal, the incense, 
and the chalk. Uh, are there any announcements from the congregation? Well, my dear brothers and sisters, again, let us remember in our prayers our sick and our shut-in. Let us remember Mary Durkee and also her family, that God would be with all of them. And let us offer prayers for her and Thank for you. others. May God bless all of us. One of my favorite scripture passages, and I pass this on to people. Trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And like I said, he's got a plan for all of us. And if we put our faith and our trust in him, we can have, as was said in the Holy Scripture, where a tempest rose uh, among the apostles and with Jesus, and he was able to call the storm and so he has a way of calming the storms in our life and that's why we constantly need to go because in him we find our strength and we find direction God bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord of God, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mercy, Mom.